How are you today? Welcome to this session. We are just going to wait uh, for a few minutes, but many of you are already joining us, which is very exciting. Uh, in the meantime, please, um, please connect. You can choose your channel, English, Spanish, or French today on the bottom of the screen. Uh, let me just open little um, intro while we are waiting. Uh, so welcome to this session. We wait for about two more minutes to start. Feel free to choose interpretation, Spanish or French. And in the meantime, while we are waiting, feel, please share in the chat your name, your organization, or where you are connecting from. This is international webinar, so it's exciting to see faces and people connecting from all around the world. So we get to know each other a little bit. We are going to wait maybe for three more, two or three minutes. And to start. Also, I'm going to say it in Spanish. Si prefieren escuchar el webinar en la traducción al español, busquen abajo botón interpretaciones y pongan el canal de español. And a special thanks to Virginia and Eduardo for being our interpreters today. So we can do this in several languages. Okay, wait, 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 might be one more minute. So it's yeah. 9 05 and then we start. Please, in the meantime, also uh, feel free to maybe mute your microphones when you are not asking questions or not speaking. So there's no background noise while people are presenting. So we can all listen well. We are almost ready to start today's presentations. Okay, so it's 9.05 and I'm happy to do some introductory words uh, to all of you. So hello and welcome everyone. Uh, for those who don't know me, my name is Luby Bogantes and I am the Capacity Strengthening Coordinator at the International Analog Forestry Network. And I'm based in Costa Rica, so I'm sending you a lot, lots of sunny and warm greetings today. And some of you joined our last week online conversation with Dr. Anilsen Anayake, the founder of the Analog Forestry Methodology, who gave us like a glimpse into what this Analog Forestry is all about and how he developed it and also applied in Sri Lanka. And we learned a little bit about core principles and concepts of analog forestry. And today uh, we are opening a space for concrete examples. So we really wanna show you some analog forestry examples across the world and some forest garden examples as well. This webinar is our second teaser for the upcoming analog forestry course, which will be held in English language, English only. And it's specifically focused on the temperate uh, Mid-Atlantic region in the US. This course will have two modalities. Uh, it will be an online course, which includes eight virtual webinar and interactive sessions, which are open widely geographically, but just be conscious of the time zones. And it will be um, directed by our international accredited trainers in analog forestry. It starts mid-February, so there's still time to register. And there will be also in-person workshop, which will take place at the Bowie State University in Maryland in the US in April. And we are grateful to welcome today also some of our partners and, and sponsors of this course. So 
So today, uh, some of our members and partners of the CHEERS organization, the Chesapeake Education Arts Research Society are joining. Welcome from STEAM onward and Ujama Cooperative Farming Alliance from Bowie State University, Heathcote Community of School of Living and the Mid-Atlantic Black Farmers Caucus and AD Astra Farms. So uh, please welcome also to this webinar. And now I'm happy to pass it on to one of our key trainers of this course and moderator of today's discussion, Jeffrey Glogievich. Jeffrey, welcome, and the floor is yours. Hello, everyone. Thank you. My name is Jeffrey Glogievich, and I'm a forester and analog forestry trainer. I live in the mountains of Caguas, Puerto Rico. And today we'll have the opportunity to learn from experiences in temperate and tropical regions in creating greater ecological and social resilience regarding the global challenges that we face. So it's my pleasure to be here. I thank everyone for joining. I thank the interpreters, um, Virginie and Eduardo and Luby. Um, we will okay. take these, these mute if you're not speaking to the group. Thank you. Um, we will take questions in the chat and the presenters will answer them after their presentations and we will attempt to do our best to answer all of them. Um, uh, let us begin with Galo Chiriboga. Uh, welcome Galo and thank you. Hello everyone. I'm just uh, gonna Present my my put my presentation on one second. Okay. Do you hear me well? And do you see my presentation? Give me a thumbs up. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. Uh, so, um, thank you, Jeffrey. Thank you, Luby. Thank you, everyone, for being here. I'm Galo Chiriboga. I'm right now the coordinator of the Analog Forestry Network here in Ecuador. I am uh, 35 years old and uh, a gardener. Uh, I live in an um, incredible country called Ecuador, and I live in a small uh, city called Santo Domingo de los Achilas. Uh, it is located between the coast and the highlands. But uh, actually, I am very interested in learning more about plants and trees. So um, here's my presentation and my experience here in, in La Florida. So I just want to start with uh, reading this, this very interesting um, quote that I find uh, recently. In, and it says, like, lichens are places where an organism unravels into an ecosystem and where an ecosystem congeals into an organism. So what it means is that every little piece of a forest is required for the whole existence of the forest. So the, the key word here is complexity. And that's what I think animal forestry is, is, is um, gaining in our lands. So I just want to start also by uh, general ideas to 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 put us in in a context so we can go and and see our our experiences in the farm so the first is understanding that every ecosystem has his own combination of species and sizes so uh here in ecuador is more more likely to change because we have so many different ecosystems within a uh, very small uh, uh Part of the uh, of, of like for in a, in one hour, we are just in in another ecosystem or maybe less. So we have many many ecosystems and and we have to understand them all. You know. Also, it's very important that uh, understanding and and doing research about characteristics of the plants help us to. Um, to uh, come at come uh, with the best combination of of the plants. So here we have a Goldenberg uh, two thousand three uh, chart variation uh, in angiosperms families, 
And what is very interesting to, to understand is how plants evolve. I, I am very interested in that. So uh, one of the first plants uh, is the magnolias. Um, and, and we have some of them that are in danger here. So, and also what plants can, can resist, for example, in, in wet, in dry, in, in, hot, uh, in hot temperatures, and if, if they are shrubs or trees, we can we can have that information um, brought in in the internet now, and and also know that that uh, that forests and nature uh, works in a community. It means that uh, all these bomarias, uh, cecropias, and all these flowers and things are combined in one one organism. It's not that every tree is an organism. But the whole organism is a, is an is an organism by itself. So, um, saying that we we have uh, with analog forestry tools, we can uh, very uh, deeply analyze forests, and in, in in that way we can design and and hold life for all living things and also for humans. Um, sorry, I have a call. Uh, so, going to my farm, to my project, my personal project, family project, this is my, my farm. So, we have 13 hectares and we are located, uh, as I said before, in, in, in between the coast and the highlands of Ecuador. This is a very special place because we, we are like a, like a nursery because we have not that much light, but... but um, uh, but always cloudy, and we have 97% of humidity. Also, a uh, 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 thing to understand is that Santo Domingo, uh, uh, this, our province, is lack of forest now. So we are only uh, ha only have like maybe six or seven percent of the natural forest that we have uh, in the beginning, and everything uh, all the dark uh, green is is the primary forest that is left and do all this due to uh, land use change yeah so uh, here we have a photo uh, that we take in 2017 uh, this is my house where is the point the red point here i live here and all these uh, we have in 2017. So we have crops here. We have uh, 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 this, the 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 process that normally people do. Uh, like we have crops organized, and we see trees around a little bit, you know. Uh, but we we came up with an idea, and that idea was to convert this place to more natural. Uh, uh, place to be. So uh, we have uh, we are an analog forestry demonstration center, and we have we select some of the plots to achieve some uh, objectives, some specific objectives, and that was like for example making a food forest, uh, making a conservation plot, make an arboretum that I wanna explain a little bit more because that my personal and 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 more more interesting project right now and we have also production plots of cacao and coffee yeah so in that moment in 2017 we have tree coverage of more or less 40 percent and now in 2023 we have uh, almost get coverage of 75 percent we are lacking coverage uh, in in some of the plots that we are uh, doing uh, uh, some uh, natural reforestation processes, and also our animal uh, plot that we have some goats and and, and donkey. Uh, but this is the change. You can see the change is completely outstanding for for me. Uh, I I'm just looking at this, and I'm 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 very speechless. So uh, my project of Arboretum, it, this is a project that we want to make for uh, giving uh, space for these endangered species that we have here in Ecuador that sometimes we don't uh, even take in consideration to when, when we are designing a plot. 
So we, in this case, we started from zero. What that, does it mean is that we not even started with a crop. We started with grass, with uh, poaceas. And, um, and we started in 2020. Now, uh, in this plot, we are here, almost in the middle, because we, we have been doing a lot of cropping and, and, and keep planting and, and, and you know, and, and help nature to develop uh, as quick as possible. And we are hoping to get to this point in uh, 2029. Uh, so here's one of the aerial photos that we take uh, maybe two years ago and um, one year and a half ago. And as you can see, this is a natural regeneration project that we are just looking for the species that comes, like the pioneers that that arrives to 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 this grass, very tall grass, and uh, this is the analog forestry methodology that I think we can we can have a, a complex a complex forest uh, in ten years uh, of maybe six feet height. So again, we are gonna look the difference between the the the, the years uh, and how it develops. And it, as you can see here in the picture, you can see these little dots, and that's when we started to plant all this this uh, blank paper, blank uh, canvas. So uh, in 2020, we start planting, and you can see all this this small. And then we have this in 2023. Yeah. And uh, it's very impressive. Like here in Ecuador, is very the the grow rate is very very high. So you can see transformation and changes uh, within your own eyes. Yeah, and um, and also this process make me understand a little bit more about the 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 species and how can they uh, I use them or how can I get them uh, a little bit better. You know, like like I, I said before, it's not only that plant, but is the 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 combination of plants that that makes this this happen. So, um, how do we select the the species? So, so we we select the species in in two ways. In for that that this algorithm is we select the species with economical potential, and uh, and not we don't plant much of them but we just want to uh, like showcase how you can develop uh, uh, economic potential with, with some of these plants and uh, we are very interested in the ones that are in risk of extinction again this is our our main goal uh, i can tra translate this this page but it, i said that uh, trees uh, in danger from the ecuadorian chaco and it was written by Walter Palacios, is uh, an article. And it, he demonstrates, sorry, he demonstrates that these species are coming uh, uh, threatened, you know? So um, these plants are, uh, some of these plants are not in the, in the, in the book, uh, the UECN, the, the list uh, extinction plants, but these are coming, uh, these plants, some of these plants are already, but some of these plants we even have in, enough information. So it's this is very very uh, sad to know, but that's what we want to do. Like uh, continue the, the the research and investigation. So now I want just to present some of the some of our our way to do things. So every time we have a plant, we um uh. We label them uh, with with different uh, aspects. Like in, in animal forestry, we have nine floors of uh, description. So what we have here is three species. Then uh, they are uh, three levels of forest of canopy, different levels. So for example, Andira macrotirsa, Carapa magistocarpa, and Apotea fixus. Um, this Apotea is 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 uh, threatened right now. Uh, is a, a cinnamon Amazon cinnamon. Yeah. So uh, I I I love to to show this because I think that this can. Morning uh, 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 in progress. Uh, 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 enlighten the 
how you you can do your design. So here's our my my arboretum in place. So I designed to put the the big trees, the more than sixty uh, meters tall, uh, here, uh, uh, very far away from from my house and from the neighbor's house. Uh, so if we have something or one of these trees can fell, uh, there's no gonna be like such as such a uh, uh, danger. Yeah. So B eight also. Uh, we we planted next to the nine uh, B nines because they they can live together, uh, and then we plant B seven around the B B seven B eight and B nine, and then we plant B six, and we plant everywhere B fives. Uh, this is just the height of the of the tree. You will understand a little bit more when when you get into the course and with the tools of animal forestry. So for just just to have an example, uh, I I put here we're planting here with Angelito Suco, and uh, we plant a B9 that is a Parquia Multifuga. It's a very big tree from the Amazon, and we put uh, achote, uh, big sorellana, and aguacate, uh, with, which is uh, Perse Americana. They are all together in one uh, consortium, and these. Uh, and and maybe Parque Mortijuga is uh, has not uh, economical value, but uh, other than than timber, you know. But uh, Big Sorellana and and aguacate uh, can can hold the 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 pro the the economic process. So, for example, uh, Big Sorellana is a very interesting plant that is uh, for the, our natives uh, nationality, uh, Tachilas. Is a constitutes a source of hope and of substance because uh, back in the early uh, they um, protect themselves from from many diseases of uh, skin disease like small uh, smallpox. Yeah. So uh, what what are we going? What are we doing? Like this is this is the one of the plots. Um, so we have here uh, Samanea Saman in the that we are holding. And uh, we do research. Uh, I, I'm gonna put all all together because I I I don't put it in the right order. But we do the uh, research. Uh, we we uh, research the diameter and the height, the biodiversity increase, and the photosynthetic biomass. And we also uh, are uh, we want to understand the pioneers, the high density. Uh, we plant in high densities and the nutrient cycles and and how the the best way of removing uh, invasive species is. So then we 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 achieve uh, three years production uh, achievements like uh, how what what products can we get from this uh, land before the trees uh, cover everything. So. We are driving and, and, and management. That's very important for for us. Like to try to cut most most of the leaves, so we can like have uh, the better soil that we can. Uh, biomass biomass uh, increase, and we also do biodiversity increase. And this is the same spot, the same spot. And now you can see the trees grow. And oh, I I I put it uh, out of the screen here. But we are now planting epiphytes like orchidias and bromelias. We keep adding biomass and soil coverage. You can see in the soil, there's a lot of leaves, the, um, the composting. We have, uh, we don't have space, more space for B9s and B8s. We, we put all B8s and B9 in, 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 this, in this forest uh, and we cannot put any more un until we, we see uh, some disease in, in one. We also uh, are select, selecting uh, analog species from, for example, the natural forests. And we emphasize on taking out invasives, uh, like bringing equilibrium, because normally we are lacking of one of the uh, uh, animals that may live there and may do an ecological function that we don't have yet. But we try to make this like a co coherence and equilibrium. So what we have here is 98% uh, of survival. 
uh, and we have a density of one by one uh, or two by two meters. Yeah, uh, and we have, of course, uh, more than thirty percent of of fruit trees. Yeah, someone is is writing. In, in the, but let me show you the my list of species. So here I, I am um, adding all the uh, all the species here. Uh, one important thing is that we we have the threatened and endangered species in one list. So for example, I have twenty two species that are in danger, uh, some kind of threatened, and and we are uh, we we put them like this. We have our of course the scientific name and and the the common name. Going back to this. So what we have uh, managed is we have now trees that uh, are higher than 60 feet. Uh, that means 18 meters tall. We have five species that are not described yet that we bring from, from some, some uh, natural forest and we don't know the species yet. We have three more than three 300 species in, in the plot, and we have 22 endangered species from which we have four in critical danger. So a very important part of our process is sharing with everyone, but especially with a with, uh, community, uh, such a community, uh, universities, communities, uh, schools, communities, and uh, national and, and cultural communities. And also with our neighbors, we 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 share a, a food. Uh, we want to be uh, very community based, and we want uh, uh, and that that's it for me. Thank you so much for here. Thank you, Gallo. Uh, I found it interesting how you when you mentioned speak of the angiosperm families. And how that ties into uh, Dr. Senayaki's uh, talk, which we have recorded for anyone who wants to hear uh, and see. And uh, families tend to have uh, uh, common architectural structure. So, so that was an uh, interesting slide. Uh, and besides architectural structure, in animal forestry, of course, we look for ecological function. So I like that you're planting kutanga, uh, which as you may not be inedible, but is a nitrogen fixture. Um, and of course, in Madrigal Forest, we look at uh, attracting biodiversity. So, so I think this is what sets uh, analog forestry apart from other um, agricultural uh, agroforestry practices. Thank you very much. So now uh, we have our next speaker, Audrey Brezo, um, who will, who, hi Audrey, I, are you ready? Yes, okay, thank yes, you. Hi. So we have, we have um, 15 to 20 minutes, and then we'll have questions at the end, okay? Okay. Great. Okay, great. Uh, I try to show you my screen. Uh, do, do, do. Here. Okay, is it okay for you? Yes. Okay. Great. Okay. So first, uh, just to introduce myself. So uh, my name is Audrey Bruxelles. <laughs> I'm working in an, a French association called La Forêt Gourmande. I'm working there for five years now, and uh, I am more specifically in charge of the plants nursery, uh, doing seedlings, cuttings, and grafting there. And I am also teaching to children to children and adults uh, about food forests and, and about uh, edible wild plants. Uh, and today I am also planting myself uh, a particular new garden, hoping to change, uh, trying to change French agriculture uh, and uh, its devastating consequences. So that's it. And uh, I met um, Maite Smet last September. She, she came here to visit uh, the Forêt Gourmand. Uh, and she thought it was exactly like analog forestry. So that's why I'm here. And uh, 
the, the main difference with uh, food forest garden um, is that we give much more space to biodiversity and natural processes in the in all of it. So uh, um, I'll try to share a bit of uh, what we're doing there in, in France and try to explain it to you. Um, and uh, I hope uh, you will have many questions. <laughs> Uh, so this is a, a picture from the from the Forêt Gourmande. So this is an association, and there is also a school and also a um, design office for the the projects. Uh, working with people, with uh, uh, collectivities like cities, with uh, businesses, just people, and and so on. So. Um, we have different kinds of productions there. I, I think you're very familiar with that, but uh, just to remind it, I, I will go quite quick. So we have a uh, production of fruits, nuts, and seeds, like the, this one, the Arocaria Arocana, very famous in, in Chile, right? <laughs> so this is a really, really good uh, source of food. We have, of course, vegetables and leaves. We are trying a lot to talk about eating uh, leaves from the trees. It's very difficult, um, actually, in France. I think not only, but it's difficult for people to eat leaves of trees. Uh, we have aquatic plants. Some plants, you can eat the roots, the tubers. Medicinal plants, of course, like this one, Aquila millefolium, very good for women. Uh, we also have mushrooms like here, the shiitake production on the, on the oaks and, and other woods. We have production of honey, pollen, propolis, all the, all the beehive products. We have spices, uh, sap and sap syrup like the birch here. Uh, you can also have paper, basketry, tutor, steaks like, uh, like this one here. Uh, shavings like this one, firewood, of course, you can make your own dye. You can have tree for the livestock. Uh, it's uh, very unknown uh, today, but it's very, very good to feed trees with, uh, with trees more than with annual plants. So we are trying to uh, get back again the, the, the leaves from the trees to the um, for feeding the, the animals. And it's also, of course, a place for well-being, peace and beauty. <laughs> and environmental services like climate, water cycle regulation, and carbon storage for TCM, and so on. So this, I think you're very familiar with. And just uh, some pictures of some products we, we can produce here. Uh, this is Akebia, very, uh, nice fruit, sweet, you can eat sweet and salted. Here, um, we call it the tree for guacamole because it's a uh, very, a lot of, um, of fat inside. So you can do a similar to guacamole. Here, a uh, tree for blackberries, very famous for um, salt. Here is the, um, the, the wood coriander, very tasty. Pecan, pecan trees, many, many French don't know. You can actually grow pecan nuts in, in France. Here is the Shisandra, a medicinal plant from China. Uh, very, very important in the pharmacopoeia for um, treating uh, many, many problems. And here for the American one is the popo. Uh, so good, and I don't know why we don't cultivate so much more uh, in France because it's so good. <laughs> we don't have mangoes, but we can have popo, so it's okay. <laughs> and so here, a picture from uh, the Forêt Gourmand. Um, 14 years ago, it was just uh, uh, just grass. And it has grown uh, very, very fast. You can hear, uh, you can see here there is um, pecan trees, 
chestnut trees. We have uh, Iroquois laurels just on the right, camellias, and different productions of, uh, of food. Or we can have that kind of uh, landscapes with lots of colors. Uh, we have a, a pond over there and very different kind of spaces, very open over there. And everything you can see here as this uh, utility for, for, for feeding, but not, uh, not only. And so this is a picture from the Forêt Gourmand just 14 years ago. And just a few points about uh, this uh, garden. Um, it is very, very diverse. We have more than 1,000 edible uh, species. Uh, it's, uh, it's very big. It, it could be more because in our temperate climate, we can go up to 7,000 edible species, but we, we try to focus on the best one. <laughs> I mean the best one concerning uh, disease, concerning the, the, the quality, nutrition, and, uh, and so on. So that's a very uh, great reserve for uh, edible species in some climate. Uh, it's not so old, but it's the oldest known forest garden open in France. Uh, we have never heard about <laughs> We have never heard about uh, another one, but if you if you have, uh, let let us know. <laughs> uh, it's not so old. We have many um, older one uh, in England and United Kingdom, but not in like, France. And our um, uh, mantra is uh, this one: density, diversity, and irregularity. So this is how we focus to plant uh, our forêt gourmand. We do over there now visits, training, workshops. Uh, we, have the, we have an associative nursery I'm working in with the, for, the, for the members of our association. And we also do funny stuff like concerts and payments and, and so on. And it's a very nice place now after a while for mother plants and getting uh, many stuff to, to propagate uh, food forests and same for analog forests. <laughs> and there is also animals over there. So we have chicken, but there are also others like, like deers. So we are um, growing all together in this uh, area. Um, now, I also wanted to talk to you about other projects we have with the association uh, concerning the concerning the forest. In, I mean, close close from it. So uh, this one is about an, a research project. So it's about the soil depollution. It's in a, an old uh, mining site, very very polluted in the north of France, and the idea is to plant. Uh, food forest there and to see if you can eat something from uh, those plants growing there. If you plant an apple tree, okay, will you die if you eat the apple or do the pollutants go somewhere else? Same for salad trees. Can you eat the leaves on that and so on? Uh, we also do carbon storage um, uh, analysis with uh, scientists and so on because it's good to many businesses to that if you can argue that it can store many many uh, carbon, uh, then you can have many many uh, money for it. So <laughs> we try also to uh, to prove this is a very good way of uh, storing carbon, even if it's obvious. But that's it. Um, we also work a lot with um, in the public area. So here is in, in the middle of a, a city. Um, before it was just a place for the dogs to go uh, pee and poo, and now it's a very nice place. Uh, everyone of all the neighbors uh, have part have participated to plant uh, this area and are taking care now of the of the trees and so on. And after they are sharing 
about how to cook those plants. So we have all the generation, the old one are uh, explaining to the youngest one how to cook. And it's a very nice place to, to create a link because it's a very big problem in France. Um, everyone hiding in his apartments. So this is a place to meet and this is very good. <laughs> um, in the schools also, of course, we can plant um, forests and studying in uh, mathematics with the biology teacher, with the sports one, doing art, doing history, talking about geography. It's a very nice way to introduce in the school. And uh, here is another project in the Chateau de Meursault. It's a very well-known uh, wine producer in France. And we are uh, adding so food forest here uh, in the middle of the vineyards and in the tubs over there. And trying to explain to the tourists and people coming over there that here is a sweet potato, as you can eat the leaves. Here is a spinach from Asia. Here is the rue, very good for medicinal and so on. So trying to change the stuff that used to be just uh, beautiful, they can actually also be useful uh, for everyone getting there. Another project with the goods, it's about uh, how to change the food from the, from the, the livestock here how to introduce more um, trees in the, in the food of here goes. Uh, this is uh, so the project that I'm specifically working on in the, uh, I'm living here, <laughs> about uh, changing uh, agriculture and nursery. So about um, growing trees, because it's very difficult in France to get uh, nice food trees so that's it uh the seedling and some projects we do with the school and and, and so on um this is all the um, projects we know now in france so it has been a big big uh exp expansion uh from these last years so it's good and uh, to finish some pictures from the, um, the cooking we do with the, the products we, we grow in the Forêt Gourmand. Here is a Japanese chef cooker. He came here and we, we grabbed for him some stuff in the forest and he, he cooked so many great things uh, here. Here is a cake made with um, acorns flour. Uh, so how to change uh, how to change agriculture is like how we can uh, plant more trees like oaks and reduce the the wheat the planting of the the wheat because initially France is a forest so that's it uh, another pie a raw pie uh, from the food forest products and uh, some smoothies and and so on with that. Uh, Lang plant here. And uh, that's it. <laughs> Thank you for listening to me and the uh, happy planting. <laughs> Thank you so much, Arvin. Um, I was very impressed when I first learned about the 1,000 species, other species. And then you mentioned that there are opportunities for about 7,000. And uh, great, great, great foraging opportunities there. Um, the oak tree, of course, is a gluten-free alternative to, to the wheat. Um, and I love your mantra, which ties into the 12 principles, our, our principles in our, in our forestry, density, diversity, and irregularity. So thank you so much. And now, thank you. And now uh, we will have a presentation uh, also uh, about 15 or 20 minutes. We are running a bit ahead of schedule, so, so that's, it's always a good sign. So, Perry, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Jeffrey, for giving me this opportunity. Um, my name is Perry Zephamor. I'm a forest officer for Sendep 
and Cameroons who uh, live in Yaoundé, in the capital city. And my colleague is also here present, uh, Eric Wesey. So uh, my internet isn't too good. So uh, if it cuts, I'm sure Eric will, uh, will continue with the presentation. I apologize for that. But let's hope he gets, I can get through the presentation with this. So it'll be next slide. Um, our, our, our analog forestry uh, experience in Cameroon is uh, uh, basically on uh, poverty alleviation at the grassroots level with women groups, and also uh, trying to restore watershed uh, uh, areas. So we work in customary uh, lands where there's a lot of challenges as far as uh, land ownership is concerned. So I tried to make a presentation based on what we've done so far and the impacts that we've done. Uh, of course, I will chip in the, the different technical aspects of uh, the database, the species list and the physiognomy formula and how we've been working around that with our practitioners. So I wanted to just show some key impacts, what we've achieved, the challenges we're facing and uh, our perspectives for the future. Next slide, Ludi. So the context which we are working with analog forestry in Cameroon is uh, to protect watershed areas, uh, secure uh, available water for portable water for uh, for our grassroots population, also to ensure there's a uh, land tenure security, sustainable agriculture, and also we work within the prism of climate change. So Sendev, we've been pioneering analog forestry work in Cameroon since 2008 in the Western Highlands. So it's an ecosystem that is basically savanna woodlands and mountain forest patches. One of the key problems that we are having in our area is uh, the scarcity of water. The lands are degraded. There's a lot of extensive grazing and harvests, crop harvests are very low and there's limited capacity to assess uh, market for products. So the, the farmers we're working with are very, very uh, impoverished and we need to use this technology of analog forestry to, to expose them to several uh, uh, aspects of maybe land protection, market availability and sustainable agricultural practices. Next slide, Lubi. After about 15 years of doing analog forestry in Cameroon, we, 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 we have uh, the loan uh, training center for uh, where we can train uh, community-based organizations uh, in, 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 at the center in Biami where we're working. So we have uh, about 11 hectares that have been attributed to us who build a training center there. We've trained over 40 community-based organizations and we've forested over 100 hectares of land using the techniques of analog forestry. So we have about 300,000 inhabitants that have benefited from our projects uh, since 2008 in 10 different communities in the ecosystems where we are working. We've so far planted more than 40,000 trees belonging to 20 different species. Now, talking about the 40,000 trees, 20 different species, we have a database of about 57 species, but we are regularly using about 20 of those uh, species because we have challenges in uh, seed banking. Uh, most of the species are for food and for medicine. But again, we have a lot of timber species potential, but we have difficulties in accessing their seeds and also uh, maintaining them in our seed banks. So you realize that most of the species that we grow are around maybe 20, maximum 25, basically for food and for medicine for our communities, as well as to improve on the agricultural practices. So we work with a lot of women at the grassroots in our communities. So we have about 11 grassroots groups that were trained over the period of time, and they are helping us to you know, uh, work on the communal lands to, to, to restore them using the techniques of analog forestry. So these are some of the, the main impacts that we've, been, we've done so far uh, after about, most, more about 15 years of practice in, in the country. Talking about uh, 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 watershed protection, uh, you see the picture there was before we practiced annual forestry in 2008, and this was when we've been, we've been able to restore the watershed in a, in a community in a village in Northwest Cameroon. So you can see the difference in tree growth. Again, we, we are also facing a challenge of uh, you know, accessing some of these areas recently. So we, we hope to bring recent pictures of, uh, of 
the development of uh, this uh, this uh, watershed. You know, in Cameroon, we are going the the community is going and uh, is undergoing an armed conflict now. It's difficult for us to assess our project areas. Next slide, please. These are some of the women who are leading restoration efforts in uh, in the village and in the communities where we are working. So we, we do a lot of uh, activities with them. They are embedded in the village in spite of the the crisis. So we've been working with them, and they are doing a formidable job in uh, in uh, in uh, propagating uh, the work that we are doing as far as our forestry is concerned. So they are protecting watersheds. They are improving upon their agricultural practices, and our facilitators, when they can move in, we give them the capacity building and technical backstopping in how on how they can grow some of these trees and using. Uh, the, the principles of physiognomic formula and also the database and how to select some of the trees to to plant to plant them in the field. Next slide. Yeah, like I was saying, we have challenges that are cultural based, that are social, financial, and also uh, political. So our cultural, our, our main challenge there is access to land and patriarchy. You know, we live in a grassroots and in a communal uh, society where uh, land is difficult to assess. The men make most of the decisions on uh, accessibility to land. So it's difficult for women to assess land. It's even difficult to for some of the men to also assess land since we're working in a, in a customary uh, land, uh, land setup. And then there's also insufficient leadership amongst, our, amongst the groups with which we're working and amongst the practitioners. Land grabbing by powerful interests and the armed conflict. These are two major uh, setbacks in our in the work that we do in in the communities, and so we are we are just trying to see how we can go around these issues and hope that maybe the crisis will come to an end. Then we can really uh, uh, make some also meaningful impact in the years ahead. But for now, we are very limited in our activities that we are doing in this community. So what we proxy uh, uh, women groups who are embedded in in the region. So these are some of the challenges that we've been facing since, since 2017. Next slide. In conclusion, I would like to say that 15 years after analog forestry practice in Cameroon, we've succeeded to raise uh, awareness, uh, creating awareness in the communities to understand the relationship between biodiversity and how to manage uh, uh, the target areas, how to improve uh, uh, water availability. We've also improve food sovereignty for both food and cash crops. So we work a lot with tea farmers, we work with wheat farmers. So currently we've been growing wheat in the communities. And also we've also done a lot of movement building amongst the women groups. So the grassroots women groups are really uh, uh, capacitized. They are knowledgeable now on the techniques of analog forestry, how to grow the trees and where to use them and how to use them uh, in their in their daily activities. So we've done a lot of movement building among the grassroots groups. So they are, um, the women groups are really empowered now. In perspectives, we would like to see animal forestry being formalized in our university faculties. It's a very important aspect in order, in order to you know get a critical mass of practitioners, not only in the grassroots, not only in the communities, but also in the university milieu. So we need to see how the curriculum, the standardized curriculum can be developed as far as animal forestry is concerned. We also like to increase our accredited trainers because we have a program of we have a program of trainers in Africa or in Cameroon in particular. So we would like to have more women doing some of these trainings. So we have three lined up already, but they are not yet accredited. And we would like to valorize our animal forestry products. Very, very important, getting the products to market. And it will get it will generate a lot of interest in the way the women are working, because if they can market their products, then more women will come, more other more practitioners will come up. To, to be using the technique in, in developing and sustaining the agricultural uh, practices. So in a nutshell, this is uh, uh, what, uh, this is our experience in Cameroon. And uh, like I said, as our database is concerned, we have a database of 57 species, and we're regularly using 20, mainly for food, medicine, and for watershed protection, environmental protection. So some of these species, we have a database which I can share I can share with you later on it's in the Excel format. And our experience with physiognomic formula, the physiognomic formula are, 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 are very instructive, but they are very difficult to apply by our grassroots mm -hmm. women groups, especially. You know, most of them are 
the, the, they find it difficult to, you know, to understand the terminologies. So this is the challenge that we'll be facing as far as that aspect of physiognomic formula is concerned. But they, 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 you know, they, they practice it on the land, the way we give them the, the lectures, the way we, 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 we do the practice with them in the field, they understand it. But using the terminology on a day-to-day -day basis is a bit of a problem. So we hope to find, to look for ways and means of how to to get that uh, in their daily activity so that they can be applying it. So that has been the challenge we're facing as far as the you know, Nomi is concerned. So I think for now, this is what I can present as far as our experience in Cameroon is concerned. My colleague Eric is here. Maybe if there's time, he can chip in one or two uh, work. So this is our tea farm. It's a typical tea farm, which we we we, we develop with some tea farmers. So you can, you can see 40% shape, see some uh, banana plantains planted within the farm. So it's all to, you know, to uh, provide shade for the tea so that the tea gets an added value. Thank you so much. Thank you, Perry. Uh, I found it interesting when you mentioned about the physiognomic formula, because it's something that we've only been touching and we will get in depth on this during our workshop. But um, it's interesting. You mentioned that there are 20 different species or 25 different species that you that you plant uh, for food. Uh, and I guess people don't really need to know physiognomic formula if these trees satisfy uh, most of what our goals are in, in allergo forestry. So, so just by promoting these species, I guess, and using them in our, in our, in our food web, um, we're going to be successful in, in promoting uh, analog forestry uh, forests. Um, so also, um, I think we can we can begin now the question part. Um, you mentioned, and I'll start with a question I have for Perry. Uh, Forty thousand trees. Um, our experience, for instance, in Puerto Rico, we have we've planted millions of trees, and in the beginning, um, believe it or not, we only had one percent survival. And then after in 1940, when an agricultural experiment station, uh, forest experiment station, was instituted, um, we began to have 80 percent survival. So it's not just a question of how many trees we plant, um, although that's a, a big political campaign uh, uh, opportunity. Um, it's how they're taken care of. So I'm just wondering, um, what have you their experience in terms of survival rates with these species, with these trees that were planted? This is a question for Perry. Are you there? Uh, maybe not. Okay. I think so, you dropped out. Okay. Okay. So um, we're open for questions, and we have we have time. So if anybody wishes to, we have. There was a question by uh, Manuel Castillo, and it was it was for other. Uh, asking how big is the project? So I'm assuming it's the it was the project that you last uh, presented, and I think you live there. So maybe maybe that's maybe that's the project he's asking about. How big that project is in size? The size you said. Yes. That's it? Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> the the size of the forêt gourmande is a uh, 2.5 hectares. So. Hectares. What twenty five square thousand square meter? But with the inch and feet, I have no idea. <laughs> okay, no, that's twenty five. So it's you say two point five hectares or acres? Hectares. Hectares. Okay. So uh, Manuel Castillo, el proyecto si si el proyecto que estás preguntando a Audrey en el chat era el último proyecto donde ella vive, fue pues de 2.5 hectáreas. Excelente, muchas gracias, Audrey. <laughs> Chao. De nada. Bueno, bueno, español, pura vida. No, no, that's what I know about Spanish. <laughs> ok, thanks. <laughs> sorry. You, you also know, lo siento, is, sorry, lo siento. Lo siento. <laughs> so, okay, anybody else have any questions? 
Um, uh, I, I have a question for Gallo, if Gallo's still with us. Um, in terms of, of uh, he spoke of many ecosystems, and I just, I, I think uh, for for the bent for our benefit, how do you go about um, uh, determining the physiognomic formulas? If you have different areas, do you use plant classification systems, or or how do you do that? Thank you. Jeffrey, um, yeah, we go to different places. Uh, uh, when you have like a forest, like just in front of you or, or in your neighbor, it will be easy. But in my case, I need to go like from three different uh, forests that are like maybe, I don't know, 30 or 50 kilometers away from my house. So I have to go to look at them. And then I... I put them all in in one in one just uh, paper so I can see the difference between them, and in that case you have to be creative and and trying to to manage like how can you integrate the three of them that are not not as different but they have other compositions of trees. So in the end, it's more like to understand the the forest uh, like the structure. The they have many uh, like uh, 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 similar things. For example, they, they have the very big trees that are like 60 meters tall. And and that is a common common thing for, for everything, for every, uh, all, all of the tree. And also you have uh, the, 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 the types of, of palms and the, and the diversity of palms and there, there, there are a little bit of changes, but then you can, you can, of course, like take decisions uh, when when you are uh, designing the forest. But I think taking consideration as much as uh, information of the forest you can. Uh, I know that, for example, in in Europe is is difficult because you don't have the the primary forest, uh, but here we have to do that work to go to the forest and try to to bring the 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 formal physiognomic formulas to 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 have that and then we can we can reproduce forests yeah okay thank you um do any of the presenters have any comments they would like to share with with our audience at this time or any questions they would like to ask the other presenters Okay. Um, I just wanted to, because we have been touching on the physiognomic formulas, I just wanted to mention that uh, we will be going over this in the uh, uh, web uh, uh, webinars during the formal part of the analog forestry course that's to be held uh, virtually and, and afterwards on site in Maryland. Um, so, we also, you also can look up information. You go directly to the to National Agroforestry uh, Network site, and you can start um, learning about uh, how to design forests using this this formula, the physiognomic formula. Um, I encourage you to do that and to sign up uh, because we're going to have a great workshop. So I think I think we can end early, um, unless. Well, I, we have a question here. What are the major challenging challenges with developing a value-added prod, product? Uh, and that's Maggie. Okay. Um, I I would like to address that to Audrey because Audrey, I see that there was some forest farm to table uh, activity there, and uh, perhaps perhaps you can start answering that question. Yes, thank you, Maggie. Ah, nice to see you. <laughs> um, yeah, the, um, it, it's true that the, the products, I think one of the main difficulties is that uh, we are not used to some products anymore. We have forgotten a lot about uh, what food we can eat and how is the best way for us to eat it. 
to eat the, yeah and so i think the the difficult part is um is is a lot of uh of uh, sharing and teaching and showing and uh i mean what what we do here talking about uh, all this new this new products you can eat um and i think maybe as as a start uh, many sell their products um to for example to uh, restaurant places to to shift uh and so on that can pay you the right price uh that you that you had to to produce it initially and this is how we will change our mentality and our uh, use of uh, what kind of ingredients we used to cook and so on and this is how to, to, to change after our cooking and the products we use in our cooking. So we do a lot of um, a communication. Uh, there was a, a TV there to show and, and so on. So I think this, got, this goes a lot with the, with the sharing uh, about all that. And this is very nice. It takes some time, but uh, it's a very nice place. Actually, this is how I feel it in France. Uh, from here, from the Bagomon. If, if I can, if I can yeah. add to that, uh, for for us, for Latin American, is I think the cost of the technology. We have here in La Florida developed a like small laboratory with uh, with uh, processes of food, and we are making, for example, freeze dried products and. But it was very hard for us to make the in, in, like invert a lot of money in in production, and uh, of course, when you do a forest, you will have like the best quality uh, production ever. It is more than organic, you know, like it's a hard uh, garden product, uh, and and sometimes you don't have as much as production as as for for you know com uh, common commercials and, and things like that. So. Uh, what I, I I I agree a lot with Edri is that uh, we have to be creative for people to understand what are we doing like because we they think we are crazy we 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 just plant one tree and we uh, freeze dry that product and try to sell to to people like in small amounts and it's limited and so but when they understand and they come here and and see the farm and see the plants and see the the structure of the plants they change their minds and and yeah and in showing that as a part of the of, of the i don't know the the trip that they do when they come here that's amazing so they mm -hmm. they uh, give us like for example uh, donations when they understand the whole process that we do and also incorporate everything that we can eat in in our in our food in our food and we're getting there we're getting 80% of our, our uh, eatable things we produce now in the in the farm and it's it's mm. a lot less money yeah to to put in in in, in the month yeah That's... thank you all this thank you <laughs> hi maggie this has been a great uh session um Good. Okay, so Perry, Perry has answered in the chat the question about uh, survival and mentioned that um, originally it was, uh, well, now it's about 85%. Originally it was about 45 to 50%. Uh, Perry, would you like to add anything else to that? Okay. So we have we have a question uh, again from Manuel Castillo Duran uh, about how markets uh, respond to the provision of, of of products and services ecosystemic products and services in the different projects. Maybe um, maybe we could have Manuel si quiere explicar esa esa pregunta. Claro, pregunta. claro, me escuchan. Sí. Gracias. Bueno, eh, muy, muchas gracias y los felicito por el evento. Este, muy bonito, muy variado. 
Y la pregunta va en el sentido de, de la, dentro de la diversidad de proyectos eh, y condiciones propias eh, físicas de cada uno y sus entornos y todo, pero todos practicando la agroforestería y, y, y en común ciertas, ciertas prácticas, cómo esto eh, se, les, se les da eh, a los mercados a que están accediendo o que están pretendiendo, cada uno con sus características propias, que para, para ver más o menos el efecto y la receptibilidad de los entornos, de, los, de las localidades y las comunidades eh, de acuerdo a los proyectos y a los productos que están produciendo. No sé si me expliqué. Ok, gracias. Um, what I understand is, um, of course, and this is how we're approaching it in Puerto Rico, of course, um, whatever we're producing is uh, locally, it's uh, used locally. Um, there's a lot of trading because that's how um, the, we, the production is, is limited um, in terms of these agroforests. So there's a lot of trading. There, there, there are um, farmers markets where this is sold. Um, but I guess the idea or the question is, what is the effect in the market of, regarding these products? And I think it's uh, what we, we conventionally call these, these markets, not, not just the farmers y los, market. Perdón, y los servicios ecosistémicos, ¿verdad? También si hay una valoración okay. de los servicios ecosistémicos a, a nivel de una valoración en, en las comunidades. So, so we also, of course, there are these uh, carbon capture projects, uh, other ecosystem services that might be uh, sold. Um, what, what kind of uh, experiences are there within agroforest, within um, analog forestry regarding this? Um, so... I think like there's a lot of um, like things we can we can we can uh, think when you ask that question, and uh, I feel that we are entering this uh, like uh, common uh, knowledge about uh, all the ecosystem services that plants provide. We are looking at. Uh, change of uh, of heat and change of uh, climate change and all these so i think every every day is going to you know to be more valued uh, the the ecosystem services and all these things that we cannot uh, yet uh, can uh, uh, like put it in a, in a table and 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 you see and say okay i'm i'm producing that much of oxygen or or how much of, of water that and, and Ranil is developing that tool, so we can we will have that in 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 in, in years. But uh, to to put for example, our case is that we uh, um, have special markets and special products that we provide to. So we uh, instead of going to all the markets and try to sell many food. We just uh, we we stay with with uh, um, with the customers that that really come here and really understand what we are doing. So they are our our strength because we we give for example one of the our our buyers are Auki and and they produce very nice chocolate from Ecuador, and they are uh, selling these products with with fresh freeze dried uh, fruits inside in Europe. And so we have only one buyer that maybe can uh, hold us for for our production, and we we want that that specific uh, buyers that can understand the process of natural regeneration and and all this. But I think in I I, I hope and I think that in common years we can have uh, more knowledge of what ecological functions and 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 what. Uh, these ecosystems provide to us. Yeah. Thank you, Gallo. Okay. Um, so I guess That's this is yeah, so so this is probably a good time to end our conversation for now. Thank you everyone for being here, for your questions, for your attention, for your interest 
And once again, we will be having more of these uh, events um, on Annabelle Forestry. So I give it back to you, Luby. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jeffrey, for your moderation. Uh, special thanks to our panelists, Gallo, Audrey, Perry. It was, as we can see also in the chat, it was very inspiring. People are asking for the recording, so we are going to share them, of course, on our YouTube channel or social media, uh, via email. And um, I, I learned a lot today. It was very inspiring to listen to all three presentations. I think you showed us different aspects, different contexts of what you do. And I hope that this is going to be inspiration for people to sign into the upcoming course, which is going to start on February 13th in English language, uh, focused on temperate analog forestry or implementation. But feel free also to reach out to us if you have questions about the course, go to our website, you can see a registration form or, you know, send us an email or any message. We are here, here to assist you. And I hope that uh, throughout the year, we're also going to have some more web open webinars like this one, because I think it's very interesting to learn from different countries and from different people about your work and, and exchange knowledge. So, so I think this, is, this was very rich conversation. So if I don't know if anybody else would like to make any final comments before we close the session. Uh, you feel free to do it now. Okay, one new message. Okay, thank you very much, Manuel. And okay, it was a very, it was a pleasure to, to share with everyone. Thank you again and have a good rest of your day. <laughs> so bye, bye everybody. Thank you.